I'm Steve and this is Liz Sigdestead and um, I guess we've been farming for seven years now in northeastern South Dakota. We're kind of located in Day County right in the middle of the prairie potholes. We started farming in 2010 and then in 2013 we kind of made the decision that we we're going to go 100% on our own um, with all of our own equipment. You know, we, we pick up a piece of equipment here and there at farm sales, auctions, and things like that. And that's kind of how we got into doing no-till farming practices. Is while we were acquiring all this equipment, we kind of had a list of what do we want and what do you absolutely need. And so for economics, we sat down and said, well, if we go the no-till route, we don't have to have as much of equipment. We could spend some more money on putting some features onto the equipment that we could make no-till farming. It would still be more efficient than going into the full tillage route and buying discs and everything like that. We should probably so. back that up a little bit, I guess, because I guess initially we had um, purchased our first um, GPS and yield monitoring system on the combine. And we had a select few fields where we had done the no-till seeding. And we did notice that there were some yield increases on the no-till fields. And so then we kind of decided to, you know, do a little bit more and more every year. And it's just been kind of increasing in our no-till acres, I guess, ever since then. And so, yeah, not only, you know, through the yield on the yield monitor in the combine, um, running out of time to actually do tillage in the fall, um, those two were probably the two biggest things in the transition to no-till. I mean, I think the last time we tried to do fall chisel plowing, we had like five or six hours before the first snow fell that we had allocated, okay, well, we can try to get in the field and do it. And that was part of what also got us introduced into no-tills. You only have four or five hours. You have to kind of start picking, okay, what areas do we need to do it? So then we started looking into compaction areas and only hitting those areas and then leaving the rest of it and then as we got into it, we realized, oh, you know, through yield monitors, the no-till areas did a lot better than where we chisel plowed, and we just need to walk away. And now we've progressed into, we don't even work some of our low grounds. We go in and mow them off. Um, and with then the in, With the rotary mower. And then in the spring, we just plant right into the grass and then spray it and kill it. And we found that that's really been beneficial because um, we're not seeing the salt issues as bad. We're also not seeing the mud when we go in to plant. The grass, we seem to think, kind of holds the tractor up. Instead of sinking into the mud, we can most of the time get through it. So so far, we haven't had any issues managing no-till residue. This year, we were kind of afraid of it. Um, going into soybeans, we had very heavy corn stalk residue. And we kind of were worried about it, but we started going into the field, and we noticed that the row cleaners were really moving it aside. And when the soybeans started popping up, we had an awesome placement um, from what we were hoping for and we're really happy with it. We see that no-till just kind of minimizes your risks in in say a, a rainy wet year, um, a hot dry summer with 90, 100 degree heat that's continuous. It just seems like you know it's saving some of your bushels out there. We plan to just stick with it and keep going with the no-till process because we believe it, it works. But we kind of have this feeling where if you take care of the soil, it'll take care of you. We're feeding the soil if we're taking care of it. Hopefully it's going to be there for us and we can depend on it. And as we trudge through the obstacles and challenges, we have you know an end point where we want to get and we want to improve in our farming practices and add more conservation practices. And hopefully we can get there and have success doing it. We want to take care of the soil because it's going to be here a lot longer than any of us are going to be here. We got to be stewards of the land because, you know, otherwise they're going to point to us back in history, well, these guys messed up big time, you know, and we don't want to be that generation.